Greetings, Nick Bucket with Sweetwater here, and welcome to classic rock and metal riffs that use inverted power chords, part two. In part one, we dissected several riffs that do this, and guess what? In part two, we're gonna do more of the same. We're also gonna look at a couple which do a great mix and match of regular power chords, regular root fifth power chords, with their inverted brethren, and they do so to wonderful effect. Riff one is the opening to Richie Blackmore's Rainbow's classic song, Man on the Silver Mountain. It's in G, and it goes like this. <laughs> As Richie Blackmore's classic Deep Purple Riff Smoke on the Water proved in part one, when it comes to using inverted power chords, he is the true master. Now, even though I'll never be able to play this riff half as well as Richie Blackmore does, I do know I've at least got the technique right. He uses his thumb to play the G on the low E string. And another thing he does which is unusual is he plays all the dyads, all the inverted chords with an upstroke. He plays the G note on the low E string with a down and the rest with an up. And he also does that slide from three to five with his first finger. How do I know this? Well, one of the great things about the troll infested sea that is the world of YouTube is this. If you use due diligence and dig deep and long enough, you'll eventually find the footage you want. And it did take me a while to find this, but sure enough, after an hour or so, I found footage of exactly what Richie was doing with his hands while he plays this riff live. Hence, I can say with authority, I ain't playing it anywhere near as good as him, but I am playing it kind of sort of right to the best of my meager ability. Got it? Now, to see just how effective the inverted power chords are, this is what this riff would sound like if I replaced them with regular root fifth power chords. Let's have at it. <laughs> Wow, that was a pain in the butt. Didn't play it that well, but it's really hard. See all that horizontal movement I was doing? By using the simple inverted power chord, it becomes much, much easier because it all falls under your hand for the most part. So. Then that's how Blackmore does it. Plus it has that great dark vibe as well. It has much more attitude than the regular root fifth power chord version. Let's move on. Riff 2 is taken from a song that starts like this, and it's the opening to one of the greatest and most influential live rock albums of all time. You wanted the best? Well, you ain't gonna get it, because I'm playing this sucker. But here goes. <laughs> Yup, you've got it, it's Juice by Kiss. Now, for years, this is how I played the repeated riff that follows that great intro. This is what I was doing. It's just four power chords, ones we all know. G5, A5, C5, and D5. And this is how Idiot here played it for many, many years. <laughs> That sounds pretty close, but it's actually incorrect. Let me explain how exactly I found this out. In 1993, I had the honor of doing a six city tour with Jim Marshall to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Marshall Amplification. And also along for the ride much higher on the bill than me was Bruce Kulick, who of course played with Kiss for many, many years. He heard me play the riff like that at a soundtrack one day when I was goofing around. And he went, hey Nick, that's way too hard. Let me show you how I play it. And this is what he showed me. He just replaced the root fifth power chords with inverted chords. And this is what happened. So G5 went from this to this. A5 went from this to the inverted version. Same with C5, from this to this. And D5 to this. So instead of dancing around like I was doing and making all those horrible squeaks by moving between the power chords, now all four inverted shapes fall beneath my fingers neatly like this. So what I was playing that was really hard to play, especially when hoping to impress an audience by moving around the stage, became much, much simpler. 
K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. That's what KISS means. And here's what the riff sounds like using inverted power chords. <laughs> Way, way, way easier. Next up is riff number three, and this is a great example of mixing and matching regular root fifth power chords with inverted power chords. This is the pre-verse riff to Slayer's sinister classic, Dead Skin Mask. It starts with three regular root fifth power chords, A5 to B flat five to an open E5. Then there's a chromatic run from E flat to E to F that use inverted shapes. And this is how it sounds. And it really is wonderfully dark. Now, to illustrate just how effective that chromatic climb of inverted power chords is from E flat to E to F, namely this one, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to play the section a little slower and replace them with regular root fifth power chords. This is what the result is. <laughs> Nah, it's lost something, hasn't it? It's lost some of its sinister edge. Even though the E and the F have lower notes in them, it's not quite as evil sounding, and that's essential for this riff. So let's go back to the inverted power chords and see the difference. <laughs> Now we're cooking with gas, the sinisterness is back, and there's a great contrast between the open E5 power chord and the inverted chords that follow. Riff number four is another great example of mixing regular root fifth power chords with inverted shapes to great ominous effect. This is the pre-chorus and the chorus from Pantera's timeless classic, Walk. And to illustrate just how effective this mix and match is, what I'm gonna do is play the pre-chorus just using regular power chords first, and then we'll throw in the inversion. Here it is, played normally. That's close, but it's not quite right, is it? What Daryl does is this. He inverts the open D5 power chord by adding the open A string note as that's the fifth. So we go from this to this. Now we're talking. Let's hear it now with that chord thrown in. And for good effect, by the way, just before the descent from G to F5 to F, Daryl inverts the B flat five power chord as well. So instead of this, it becomes this. Right, that said, let's add the inverted D fives and the last of the B flat fives inverted as well. <laughs> Not as good as Dime, but good enough for me. Now let's listen to the chorus. With the exception of one of the chords in the chorus, they're all root fifth power chords. The only one he inverts is the E flat five. What I'm gonna do to illustrate how effective this simple change on just one chord is, I'm gonna play the chorus with the E flat five played as a regular root fifth power chord. So this is the normal way. <laughs> Now 
Nah, that doesn't sound quite right, does it? Let's try inverting that E5 flat sucker, shall we? And we'll do so by adding the fifth on the A string, making the chord lower and darker. So instead of this, it's now going to be this. Don't know about you, but I'm sold already. Here's the riff again with that bad boy thrown in. I think it's going to work. Nowhere near as tight as Dime would play it, but hey, close enough for an adult like me. That's the effectiveness of the inverted power chord, my friends, when used by someone as smart and as brilliant as Dimebag Daryl. Incidentally, when you look at certain transcriptions of Walk, you'll see the inverted D5 power chord played at the fifth fret like this. And you'll see the inverted E flat 5 power chord played one fret higher like this. Now the chords are right, the notes are right, but the position is wrong. Once again, if you dig into YouTube, find stuff of Dime playing, you will see that he plays the D5 open like we've just done, and the E flat 5 at the first position like we've just done. And it makes sense when you think about it. When he was playing the pre-chorus, he was moving like a whirling dervish, and during the chorus, he was doing backing vocals, so it makes sense he'd want to keep his hands here, not move up and down the neck. And sometimes he'd also invert the C5 power chord and also the B flat 5 power chord in the chorus of walk. So instead of just being it would be this, and this is truly monstrous sounding. Once again, played with much more groove than I ever could, but you get the picture. Inverted power chords, good. Last, but certainly not least, we come to a riff that, in my humble opinion, truly exemplifies just how much menacing oomph some well-placed inverted chords can give a riff. This is the opening riff to accepts brilliant balls to the wall. And here is what it sounds like if you just play it using regular root fifth power chords. <laughs> No, 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 or should I say 999, not enough metal, not enough heart. This is how Wolf plays it. No root fifth power chords, they're all inverted power chords. This is what he plays for the G5 chord, and it's just two open strings, the D and the G, the D being the fifth, so it's lower. So it's a one hand chord, check it out. Love it. The E becomes this. Just one finger at the second fret on the A and D strings. And my favorite, because it's really heavy sounding, and once again, you don't have to use your fretboard hand at all. The D, he just plays open A and open D. Once again, A being the fifth, so we've got this. So, let's hear the riff played Wolf Hoffman style. <laughs> Now I know what some of you are thinking, how come the English idiot played the chromatic rise from G to G sharp to A by playing the G open and then playing the G sharp at the 6th fret and the A at the 7th? And the reason is very simply this, that's how Wolf played it. He does this. How do I know? Once again, I went to the videotape. And in my book, it's Wolf's Way or the Highway, or should I say, Wolf's Way or the Autobahn. Especially now, because he looks like a Teutonic Jason Statham. Anyway, bad jokes aside, I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at inverted power chords and have seen the power of them, especially when used with discretion and thought. Sometimes just adding one or two to a riff can dramatically change not just the mood of the riff, but the attitude of the chords around them. So, have fun with this. 
I'm out. See ya!